In this video, we're going to make a Java web project integrated with Tomcat in our Eclipse environment. At this point, I'm on a virtual machine that is pretty much just plain vanilla Windows. All I've installed on it is Eclipse and also so Eclipse a Photon and a Java 10 JDK. So first I'm going to go to File, New Project. This is where it gets a little tricky if you've never done it before because you're looking here to say, where do I create a web project? And there are all kinds of words. None of them really jump out. So let's say new Java project, and then I'm going to go down to web, and then I'm going to choose dynamic web project. Now, what's the difference between dynamic and static? Static is just HTML, JavaScript, uh, CSS, the things that make a static web page. Dynamic means it includes a source folder where you can put Java code, servlets, things like that, which is what we're interested in. So I choose next project name. Uh, we will call this one plant places. And uh, OK, all looks good. Target runtime is important because this is where we tell it what web server software or application server software we want to use to run our program. So I'm going to choose new runtime. And you see there are many options here. There's Apache, all kinds of other options. Kind of like Eclipse, Apache is one of those things that everybody no, I shouldn't say everybody knows, but it's kind of a lingua franca. It's something that that uh, most developers will know that word. Not everybody will be comfortable with WebSphere. Not everybody will be comfortable with the others. So now we need to pick a version. For our purposes, anything great, really anything greater than seven is fine. Uh, one note, if you pick Tomcat 8, you notice this download and install button is available. On the other hand, if we pick Tomcat 9, the download install button is not available. So you have your choice here. You can install Tomcat 9 separately and then hit the browse button here and you can go out and say, okay, well, here's where I've installed Tomcat 9. You can do that. Uh, I don't have anything in there right now, so it gives me an error. Uh, but to save time, and because it, for our purposes, it doesn't make much difference, let's go ahead and pick Tomcat 8.0 and then let's go ahead and choose download and install. Uh, of course, read the terms and conditions very carefully, accept and finish. And now I'm going to put this one, because I already have a Tomcat 9 folder, I'm going to make this one Tomcat 8. And really, if you're debating between Tomcat 8 or 9, don't debate for too long, because it's very easy to set up Tomcat, and it is also very easy to change Tomcat instances within Eclipse. So no worries if you want to swap between 8 and 9 or install 8 now, install 9 later, easy to do. Nonetheless, at this point, I'm going to just hit browse one more time and I'm going to confirm. Take a look in here. You see Tomcat 9. You see these folders exist now where they did not exist before. And if you can kind of match up the date here and the date on my clock on my VM, you can see where, sure enough, these files were just recently written to. A note, if you're still getting an error up here that says Tomcat version cannot be found or identified, whatever that is, it just needs a little nudge. So if that's the case, just go to Browse, hit Cancel. If you absolutely have to, go back and go forward. Sometimes it just needs to be told, hey, I've downloaded and installed Tomcat. So go ahead and choose Finish. Tomcat, by the way, fairly lightweight. Uh, I, I haven't checked lately, but about 50 megabytes or so, which is, is really lightweight for what it's doing. Okay, Dynamic Web Module 3.1 is fine. Uh, default configuration is fine, and I'll go ahead and choose next. Okay, source folder on build path, source is fine. Next one more time. Uh, let's go ahead and generate web XML because we're going to need that eventually anyway. So let's go ahead and have it created for us. So context root is plant places and content directory web content, and we choose finish and we let it go. Okay, we'll go ahead and open with the Java EE perspective, which just kind of makes it nice and friendly for Java. And now let's go to web content and let's go to web INF. Uh, web content is where we typically will place HTML files and the like. So let me just make a new HTML file and we'll call this one index.html. Whoops, index.html and choose finish. And I'll say welcome to our first page. Boom. And title, we'll call this one plain places. And save. Okay, and now uh, I'm going to go over to the servers tab. And you see no servers are available, so create new server. Yeah, uh, Tomcat 8, that's fine. Uh, next, and I'm going to take this, and sorry, what I'm doing here is I'm just setting up a server within Eclipse. It kind of feels like we already did this. 
what we did just a few moments ago was download the Tomcat software. Now we are taking that software and we're making a new instance of it to run our program. Once we've downloaded the software, we can make several server instances from that software. Think of it kind of like creating a mold and then creating several cookies out of that mold. So what we did initially was make the cookie cutter and now we're making the cookies. So plant places, how in the world did this get here? Well, that's the dynamic web project that I made earlier. You see, it has the little globe indicating it's a web project, and it has a little J indicating that we can put Java source code in here and make it truly dynamic. So I choose add, and now I choose finish. And now you see it says Tomcat 8 server stopped republish. And so what I can do now is either hit play to start the server or debug. Debug is only going to be valuable when we have Java source code, but the vast majority of the time when we're deploying an application, we are going to want to debug through it. So just by default, I like to hit debug. So I hit debug, we allow access and give it a couple tries here. And you see it did not take long. Now it says debugging and synchronized. So I go back to my browser, open a new tab. And now let's see if we can look at this page. So I'm going to do HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 by default is localhost, so that's the IP address of whatever computer you're on. Now, very careful. 8080 is the port, which is not the default port for uh, web content. Usually we use port 80, so if you don't put a port number in there, it will be port 80. In just a moment, I'll show you where that's configured in case you want to change it to a different port. Now, we put our application name, plant places, and then index HTML and take a look welcome to our first page. So once again, the IP address of our the machine we're on, the port, which for Tomcat is 8080, the application, which I'll show you in just a moment, and then index HTML is the page that we're viewing. So what's our application name? It's plant places. And what if we want to change that to something else? Double click on Tomcat here and choose uh, the modules tab. And you see under the modules tab, by default, it's taken the name of our project and it's made that our path as well. You can choose edit and you could call it something else. So I could call it something like plants. And if I did that, the next time I go here to this browser, I could just say plants instead of plant places. This is especially helpful. I'm not going to change it here because I'll leave it as it is. This is especially helpful if your project has a funny name with a version in it and you don't want that funny name and version to appear in the URL. You want something that's a little bit easier for the user to access. If I go back to overview, uh, best to double click on the tab so we can look at this in high def. You'll notice that our default port is 8080. Uh, you can't have two servers running on the same port. So if you happen to have two Tomcats running or two web servers running, you do need to change this port. Or if you just don't like port 8080, you can come in here and change that port. But nonetheless, that's generally considered the default port for Tomcat. So this has been a look at how to set up a very basic dynamic web project. We haven't added any Java classes to it yet, but that will come soon enough. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Thank you.